Hey, this is Lane, the project guy. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're making drain cocks for the cylinders on our Northern 484 live steam locomotive. All locomotives uh, that use live steam, including full scale prototypes, require you to be able to vent the cylinders. That's to get the water out of the cylinders that's left over from the previous days running. That would cause a hydraulic lock, which would damage your uh, pistons, cylinders, and, and push rods. Also, it's to allow you to be able to warm up the cylinders before working the locomotive that day. So when a locomotive is sitting at the train station or in the train yard, you often see videos and pictures of the, of the steam locomotives venting steam out of the front of, of the cylinders up near the pilot trucks. That's uh, allowing those cylinders to warm up so that when the locomotive starts working and steam is entered in introduced into those cylinders, it won't condense into water. It will remain working steam. So I've chosen to use automatic drain cocks. And the way we do that is to form a seat inside the cock and put a little 1 8 inch ball bearing in there, which will allow water to vent. But then when it's just steam, it'll push that ball bearing up against the seat and block the exit, allow you to uh, retain the pressure in the cylinder. So we're going to go out in the shop and I'll show you how we're going to make these. Okay, I pulled some plans off the IBLS website, it's the International Brotherhood of Live Steamers. I think it was courtesy of Steve Adler that posted those plans. And so we're going to make this in brass. We'll get started off by cleaning up the end of my stock, facing it off, and then put a little chamfer on there, try and make it pretty. And then once I back the tool off, I just hit it lightly with the file to knock off any burrs. Once that's done, we'll drill a center hole so my drill will get started in there straight. And we're going to need to do several steps here with our drilling. The first one is use a number 21 drill and go in uh, 0.600. That's going to be the kind of the center bore of our barrel. Yeah, we'll get that. That's pretty, isn't it? Seeing those chips come out. And now we're going to go with a number 47 all the way through. Uh, I'm planning to make this 0 0.750 deep, so I at least want to go that far into the stock with this drill. Basically, I want it to come out the other end once I part it off. It's kind of a small drill bit, so be careful here. Don't put too much pressure on it. Your hole will wander off center. And then go in with a reamer and ream that hole. I don't know that that's, this is critical, but you definitely want the Hone part of the barrel to be nice and burr free. So I guess the reamer helps with that process so that your ball bearing will seat properly. And then this is a little tool that I made in the shop. It's a spring loaded tap guide and it keeps the tap lined up straight so that, as you can see, I put a little tension on it there as I brought the tailstock forward. And we'll tap this. 1032 is the size threads and you can see my sharpie marks on the tap so I can see how deep I need to go there's several marks on there if uh, I've used this tap on the num number of projects but it's that shortest depth that we want blow it out and now we're going to sharpie it up in preparation of parting it off I want this barrel to be 0.750 in length. I use an old set of calipers to, to mark this. The way everybody doesn't get on to me about messing my calipers up. And then we got a little small parting blade. I'm going to run up there and to my mark. And this length is not terribly critical, but you can see me lock the lathe down the slide and start running this parting blade in. And this is a process that 
gives a lot of people trouble, but I don't seem to have the same troubles when I part stuff off. Just run it in by hand at a slow and methodical rate and kind of judge how much bite the blade can take. You want to slow your lathe down when you do this also. So I got that part off and then I spun the piece around in my collet so that I could clean up the end where I parted it off. And I just kind of, kind of square this up by facing it off. See me lock my lathe down again and run the cross slide over. And put a little chamfer on this end. This is going to just about finish up our barrel. We're kind of done with it now. And that whole process probably took me in real time about an hour. And of course I made four of these originally. This is actually the fifth one. After I made these, I thought this would make a nice video. And uh, I haven't seen a how-to video on how to make these. So I thought it would be something worthwhile to, to record and show you guys. And there comes my finished product so it's got that little small hole on that end it's the vent and this is just a cap in to allow you to access it to load your ball bearing still got a few things to do that barrel but we'll move on to my cap so this is quarter inch hex rod and brass sharpie it up and the only difficult part here is you've got to thread a little small nub and close your eyes while I'm using my good the uh, good calipers to mark this. Um, sorry about that, but that brass shouldn't hurt the hardened steel. So now we're going to bring this down to size. It's going to get uh, tap or a 1032 thread pattern on it. So this is a lathe stop that I made in the shop and it's been really handy. It'll take a dial indicator also, but this doesn't have to be really precise. I just put the stop on there so I don't have to uh, keep judging my depth cut. And I just uh, run it by hand, as you see, until it bumps the stock. And then I stop. And that works out well for me. So ultimately, we're going to run a 1032 die on this. So 0 0.190 is what I'm looking for. And of course, it it took uh, four or five tries at this before I snuck up on the correct size. I just cut that out for brevity. And this is a also a tool I made in the shop that keeps that die lined up. You use your tailstock as support for the end of it, and it runs along a a rod there that's retractable. And then I flip my die over so I can get those threads just as close up to the head of my bolt as possible. That's, of course, you can't run the threads all the way to the uh, to the end. So you're going to have to put a, get rid of a, that shoulder. You can see my headstock rotating a little bit. Yeah, that's because I didn't have it in the low gear. But that worked okay. So this isn't going up all the way. And it's because I'm running out of threads and my shoulder is larger. So I could either chamfer the inside of my barrel or I can come in with a parting blade and just uh, take that shoulder off. And that's what I chose to do. You see a lot of bolts made like this uh, out in the production world. And then we're going to part off our bolt and I put the barrel on there just to stabilize it in case I dropped it I could find it easier it also helps me pick a visually pleasing length for the head of that bolt so then I spun it around and used the barrel as an arbor and I'm going to face off this head here make it look pretty I need to raise up my parting blade just a little. I'm leaving a little bit of nub and so I had to knock it off with the file. I mean it's just with the size of a human hair it's a little small nub but I am off center slightly. 
All right, so now we're going to make the stem that connects the barrel to the cylinder. And it's just a long threaded stem, all thread. And the problem here is, is that we take this down to a small size and this brass can get really flexible and you'll wind up with a wonky stem. I had that happen once and I was able to take some pliers and straighten it back out. But I learned that the best way to alleviate that problem was to get this down to dimension and thread it before drilling the center hole. We're going to want a hole that passes completely through this stem to let our water and steam exit the cylinder and into the barrel of the cock. And we're going to thread it 840 because that's what the uh, the hole is tapped in the bottom of my cylinders, my cast iron cylinders on the locomotive. Just threading this by hand now. I'm speeding this up for you so you, you don't have to spend a lot of time watching this, but you know how it goes. And come off. I didn't need to thread it all the way up. I just, uh, I have plenty of length there, so just kind of guessed at it, and then I'm going to make me a mark. And So this is center drilling it with a number 47 all the way through. I put me a little Sharpie mark that's .750 in depth. But... Uh, here I am. The only way you can cut this off, you can't part it off. It'll once again it'll bend that brass. At this point, we don't have much strength to work with, so my Dremel's the best way of parting this off. And then you wind up with your stem, and you can see the little center hole is a little bit off. It's, those small drills just wander on you. This is my new edge finder. So I've got the barrel of the drain cock in a collet, and I'm finding the center of that barrel by indicating off the edges of the collet. So I'm going to hit the half function on my DRO, indicate that I want to do it on the y-axis. And that uh, is going to allow me to zero that out. I should be in the center of the barrel. That little edge finder is new to me. It's uh, when it makes contact to something metal, it completes the circuit and lights that light up. And I think I'm going to like that. It seems to be accurate. I keep getting the same readings over and over when I am testing the accuracy of it. So I think I'm going to like it better than the wobblers. And then I'm just showing you here. I went down for a sandy check to make sure it looked like it was it was in the center. And it was. I had to indicate off the collet because with the ball bearing uh, against another round surface, it would have been difficult to find the apex of those curves make sure you were indicating correctly so now i used a, a little center drill to make a hole and came in with a number 28 you only want to go halfway through this barrel you, you only want to get into the bore no further uh, once again i'm using my spring-loaded tap follower that i made in the shop so this thing's in two parts the barrel screws apart and there's a spring in there and your plunger spring loaded sorry i didn't reposition the camera i was uh, just cruising along and you you see what's going on here but the uh, frame isn't very professional all right now it's time to solder our threaded stem into the barrel using stay sealed 56 and some flux the flux is the key to this this is the dark colored flux which seems to work the best for our modeling purposes. The water separates from the mud, so you have to stir it good. And uh, use a tongue depressor for that. I got a whole box of them from a craft store. And then uh, we'll come in with a little small brush and put some flux on there. Try to keep it in the area you want the solder to go because the solder is going to really follow the flux. And so I just got it mounted up right there around my stem. And then using some map gas and that number 56 silver solder. 
you've got to use these fire bricks. I tried doing the first one in the vise without fire bricks and you just can't get it hot enough. So going in there and getting it just right temperature and she'll flow and then you just cool it down. I had a drip of solder on the barrel of the drain cock. Um, and I was had to grind that off. You see right there where it pulled at the bottom. Basically used too much solder. But I was able to use the belt sander and get it off and it made it nice and pretty. You can't tell. And it was a beautiful solder job. You can see that joint looks really nice. Got these little modeler wrenches. And uh, this, this bolt was a little stiff the first couple of times. It had some brass little shards in there in the threads that needed cleaning out but you can see there's a washer and a nut that have to be made also but those are those are straightforward so i'm not going to spend time showing those to you but there it is so you can screw that in the bottom of your cylinder and it works automatically the little ball bearing plugs the hole thanks for watching and please subscribe to lane the project guy give me a thumbs up and hit the notification button see ya